In this presentation, I will be talking more about titration curves in specifically using the example of sodium carbonate and HCl. The purpose of using this titration curve is to show you how different working pH of the different indicators will be reflected in the end point of the titration. Sodium carbonate is actually a diacetic base and diacetic base is a base that accepts two replaceable hydrogens. HCl is a monobasic acid. It means that being a monobasic acid, it donates one replaceable hydrogen. Now, since sodium carbonate is a diacetic base and HCl is a monobasic acid, hence two moles of HCl is required to completely neutralize one mole of sodium carbonate. When phenolphthalein is used, its working pH is between 8 and 10. This coincides with the first equivalence point of sodium carbonate. Hence, at this point, one mole of sodium carbonate reacts with one mole of HCl. When metal orange is used, its working pH is between 3 and 5, and that coincides with the second equivalence point of sodium carbonate. Hence, when one mole of sodium carbonate reacts with two moles of HCl, we can therefore see when phenolphthalein is being used, it will use half the volume of HCl as compared to when metal orange is being used. Therefore, when we use phenolphthalein and metal orange indicators, we will obtain different volumes of HCl at the end. This curve helps to explain why. The exact graph can only be obtained when a pH meter or data logger is being used. If you would like to have a replay of this video, please watch it again.